I'm Ivana Manley and we're here at Manley Labs in the microphone testing room. And today I want to go over some common noise, buzz issues with the microphones that you might encounter. So you've had your Manley mic for a while and then just one day it's like buzzing or humming or something like that. And you walk, you walk you've got it mic'd up and you walk over to it and you touch it and the hum goes away. Well, that's an indication that you have a grounding issue with the chassis of the microphone. So let's go through that and show you how you could cure that. It's really simple. Right, so on a Manly Reference cardioid mic like we have here, this is a pretty modern production unit. We're going to remove these two screws that hold the case on. We're gonna use a number one screwdriver you can use a number zero, but number two will be too big. This one just happens to be really long. So just very carefully, you're going to remove these two screws. Boom. Next, to show you how to take the chassis off the mic, you're gonna grab it in your hands like this. You never need to remove the suspension off from the body. It can stay on there forever. You're going to wiggle this out like this, and you can pull the whole guts of the microphone out very carefully. Ta-da! Just like that. I just want to let you know, you can hold the microphone like this. We don't want to touch any of the electronics. Um, there's very high impedance parts of the circuit, and you don't want the oils on your finger to get on there. You certainly never want to touch the capsule diaphragm, okay? but you can hold the microphone like this and don't be afraid of it. Now, to fix these grounding issues, let's look at where the microphone grounds connect. They come in, they connect under these two screws at the base of the microphone. They connect here to these aluminum rails. These rails are connected to the circuit board with these brackets and so on. So we need to make sure that all of these points are conducting with integrity. Well, the first thing we're gonna check is the body of the mic. You see how there's some aluminum exposed here underneath the black anodize? That was done with a little drill bit. You can do it by hand. This one's done already, but you can just take like a 3 16th drill bit and just, just turn it in the countersink like that to expose the aluminum. This should have been done at the factory, so if you feel like doing it, you can do it again. Also, the corresponding holes, give it a little turn here too. That helps, that helps the screw gain purchase and make a good ground connection in the base of the, an, of the microphone. The red anodize is non-conductive, so we totally want to expose the aluminum underneath that. And you can do that just like that with a little drill bit. <laughs> cool. Then when we get the, the screws back on, it'll bite into that aluminum better. If you were really ambitious and you really wanted to check out some more, you could remove this screw and uh, maybe run that drill bit. You know, if you were removing this, you could do that too. But usually you don't have to do that. On some of the gold mics, the older ones especially, let's show how we get, this is a really old gold mic here. You see it has the two connectors. Yeah, I'd use the right size screwdriver and, and really press down so you don't strip your, strip your screws. There we go. Now, the gold microphones, those are machined out of brass and they're gold plated. So those guys are very conductive. But again, the aluminum base is what sometimes, dang, that's on tight. Let's be really careful. There we go. Woo, that was on tight. Old microphones, we used zinc-plated uh, steel screws. These days we're using these stainless steel screws 
So they're a little stronger, you'll be less likely to strip those. You don't have to put these things on crazy tight. All right, to take apart a gold mic, again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just wiggle, wiggle it out. We wanna be careful not to shear off the pad switch when we wiggle it out, okay? So you can leave it in there if you want. You know, if you're working on things here, you don't feel comfortable about the capsule, you can just work on it like this and let this be protection. Or you can pull the puppy out like that. So there's that gold mic. So where we were with the holes that go into the base, these ones, I'm gonna see, I can see that this one, it needs more aluminum exposed. I, it's just all black in there. If you have a 440 tap, you could run that in there and run it out to expose the threads better. But usually you'll get by by just making sure that you've got some aluminum exposed here so that the screws will conduct from the brass body that's been gold plated into the base like that. And really old ones, you have three screws. The newer ones you had too. So there. So that's going to make a good ground connection now. Another common problem with these really old gold mics are uh, these connectors get loose sometimes. So there's an XLR connector and there's this four pin Radio Shack connector here. Those you're going to, if, if you ever get those loose, um, that's, that can create ground problems as well, but you're going to use an 050 Allen key, and there's you see there's a set screw right there. You can back it out and just put it right back in. Tighten that down so it's making a good contact. And again, same here. That Radio Shack contact, it's buried in the base. You can just tighten that puppy down, make sure it's, it's snug and it's not wiggling. Uh, those little hidden screws in there, we call them grub screws or set screws. You can see it's just a little, it looks like a screw thread, and then he has an Allen in the top of it. That's how that, that's just going in there. It's a, like a blind screw. That's that. So then once you put that back together, again, you don't want to shear off the pad switch. Assembly is the reverse of the disassembly, and you can put the screws in. On the gold mic, um, you probably don't need the uh, tooth washers you know, you can just replace all three screws. What we're doing these days on the cardioid mic to really help with the ground integrity, when you put that back in there, is we've got these nifty little, the little countersink star washers. So they fit in the angled cutout for the screw. So to put those on, those really help just grab everything and keep the screws from getting loose and help the ground stay grounded. So we see we've got that, we've got the aluminum in the base exposed, we've got the aluminum in the chassis exposed in the body. And then I put that star washer in there. And then when we tighten that back up, then that should create a really nice, good ground connection. And we'll do that for the other one as well. That should help most of the issues. Um, there's rare occasions maybe where the screens come loose. Uh, it's pretty rare. Um, but most of a grounding issue, if you're getting a buzz or a hum like that, and it's not like a power supply issue, it's something with the chassis, or it disappears when you touch the microphone where you become the ground. Uh, look for those screw issues in the base of the microphone. That's the way you fix that, okay? Uh, let us know if you have any questions by going to www.manly.com and go find the service request form and fill out the service form 
and my team will help you. Thanks so much, um, and enjoy your manly mics.